What's up everybody, welcome back to this channel. Welcome if you're new here, real quick. My name is Angus, on this channel I try to do vlogs a lot and I like, really like edits and stuff like that, that's what I really enjoy. But every week I try to break down that stuff in sort of different tutorials, which is what we're gonna do today. So if you wanna see more content from me, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below. In the last tutorial, I covered HitFilm Express and you know how to download it and stuff like that real quick hoping that it would be kind of a nice upgrade for you guys using iMovie this week I'm gonna try to push a little bit further and just give you some of the basics and stuff like that to help you get started in that program hey. Whew. All right, so it has been a little bit of time since the last tutorial by the way real quick today you may not see this tutorial today, but it's Tuesday, November 6th. If you haven't voted yet, please make sure to go out and vote. It is definitely super important. I voted. I got this awesome sticker, which is clearly the best part about anything. Honestly, you get a free sticker. Like Anyway, that aside, today I'm going to show you guys the basics of HitFilm Express. We're just going to hop right into HitFilm. I'm going to show you guys some screen recording, and we'll get right into it. Okay, so first things first, you got to open up the program. That is probably the most important <laughs> step. Uh, real quick too, when you notice, when you open up this program, you should see like all these tutorials on this page. You know, they got some pretty cool stuff that you can do. So I just want to remind you guys to check all that stuff out because there's some stuff that I'm obviously not going to get to. And this is a great resource that they have just to be able to use to figure out how to do some effects and stuff like this. Even if you don't necessarily want to do every effect here, what you learn from making one of these things will probably give you a lot of information that you can use in a lot of other videos and stuff that you make. All right, anyway, let's get right into it. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is open up a new project. So you're gonna wanna come up to file, which is in the top left corner, and then come down and press new. That's how you're gonna start new projects. Then it's gonna bring up this project settings window. And this thing is gonna give you all your options for setting up your project settings. So this will kind of be um, the resolution of your screen that you're working in for your for your video and kind of set how it's gonna be exported. You know, this stuff down here, the audio and the rendering, I don't really change much of that. And I don't even change much of the video stuff. So to really set up your project, you can easily just pick one of these templates if you know what your resolution is. Like if you have 4K, you can pick a 4K template down here and the frame rate you want. But for me, most of my videos I export are usually all in 1080p at 24 frames per second, which is 23.976 is actually what it's supposed to be. Um, so for this, for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to use this template, the one that says 1080p full HD, and then it's going to make sure all your settings look like this. And that's pretty much all you need. It's pretty standard actually for making most videos. And so after that, you're just going to want to press start editing right here. And then it's going to take you, wait a few seconds. And then it's going to take you to your editor window. If you've been using iMovie right away, this should look kind of familiar, but I'm just going to break down a few things here and show you guys what's what. So if you look right here in this area where all these little checkered boxes are, this is your, it's called a viewer in your, in this app, but in other tutorials, I've called it the preview screen. So this is going to show you everything that you're working on in the timeline, everything that the timeline, any clip that's in the timeline where the playhead is over is going to show up here. This is where you're going to show, look at all your stuff and kind of watch your playbacks and stuff like that. You notice that it has the black and it has the checkers because this is showing you that it's transparent. There's no video right now. There's nothing on this. If you exported it, it would just be blank. Right below that is your timeline. And your timeline is where all your clips and stuff will go. This is where you'll edit all your video and put it in there, you know, just like iMovie. Um, you have your video clips on the top and your audio for those clips on the bottom of that. As well, you have some other controls here that you didn't have before but we'll get into those maybe down the line in a different tutorial. After that, right to the left of that, you have this little thing over here that's basically your libraries. It's your media library, your effects library, your controls library, history, and text library. Um, so any kind of clips that you import that you wanna use in your project will show up here. Um, any photos or whatever other media that you have imported into this project will show up right here. From there, we have this other thing which is called the trimmer. It's basically another preview window or another viewer, like the, the big one over here, except this one is gonna show you the clips that you have in your media library so you can watch them and decide if you actually wanna put them and use them in your timeline first. Tell me, tell me. 
outside. All right, so now let's actually start working by importing some footage. To do that, you're just gonna come down to these little libraries I just showed you. You're gonna make sure you come under the media tab. One thing too, you'll notice wherever you're working, in areas in this um, editor this little blue bar will show up right here showing you that that is the area you're working so if i clicked up here it'll show up here if i clicked on the trimmer window it'll show up here and if i click on the timeline it highlights there this just helps to show you what area you're working in so you don't accidentally make like adjustments in one area and they show up in some other part of the editor back to importing make sure you select the libraries thing you have the media tab selected and then all you have to do is press this button that says import. It's gonna take you to your folders. Just go and find a folder that you know you have video in and select a couple video clips that you wanna use in a project. I'm just gonna use these GoPro clips. Once that's done, you have the ones you want highlighted and just click open. And then it's gonna bring them in right here and they'll just show up all in the list. If you wanna change how they show up in this list or how they're arranged, you can press between this button or this button, it'll kind of give them, you know, it'll make them smaller and just show up more as a list. And this one will show up more as like a picture kind of list. So you can see the little thumbnails. It's a personal preference on which one you want to use. I'm just going to leave it like this. Now, if you notice too, that the trimmer window now has a picture in it, that's because this is previewing the clip that is highlighted blue right here. It's showing up in this trimmer window. So if you want to change what video is showing up in this window you just click on any one of these videos in the media library it'll be highlighted blue to, ne to let you know which one you're working with and then you have a few tools when you're working in this trimmer window you can play through the video just like this and it'll play and you'll notice that this little white bar moves along the timeline that is your playhead for this little window so you can click on that and drag it to scrub along and figure out what part of the videos you want to use also if you want to trim this video so it's not the full length you can use in and out points so an in and out point will basically set where the video starts and set where the video ends so it's trimming the video it's not it's just taking a part of the video not the whole thing so to do that you can use these buttons right here this is called the in the in point button an out point button you can also use the keys i and o so for this clip i don't want to use the whole thing i'm just going to pick a point by scrubbing along the timeline and then i want to set an in point so it starts here so i'll just press this button right here and then i'll scrub along some more and say i want it to end right there i'll press this button that says out point and now you'll notice that this little area right here is the only area that's highlighted gray and that means that this is the only part of the video that you'll be using after that if you want to if you want to put this little portion of the clip into the timeline all you have to do is come and click on the portion that is highlighted blue in the media folder click on it and then drag it over to the timeline it'll kind of outline green and then you just drop it in the spot where you want it to be now you'll notice this little pop-up thing comes up um the reason for this is because the footage i shot was in 2.7k and the project is only 1080 so it's asking if i want to change my project settings to be 2.7k so it matches all the clips i'm just going to say no and this way nothing's going to be changed no settings are going to be changed but like i said now that you have these clips in the timeline you notice that the video clip is on top just like it would be an iMovie and the audio clip is on the bottom and you can see the waveforms right here and uh yeah it should look pretty familiar at this point you'll notice too that now there is the video showing up in this preview screen right here that's because we have video on the timeline and the playhead which is this white bar is over that video so that's what's going to be showing up in the preview screen now talking about putting videos in the timeline you finally have this feature that you didn't have in iMovie which is to be able to stack videos so i could easily do that just by clicking on another video and dragging it and making sure those little green boxes show up on top of the clip that's already in the timeline and boom there you have it. The video clip will be on top of the existing video clip and the audio clip for that will be on the bottom of the one that's already there. So you'll have a couple tracks right here. It'll say video one, video two, audio one and audio two. Pretty much anytime you um, import video, these two will be linked. So if you move video two, audio two is gonna move with it. On this program, you can do this as many times as you want. So let's just say that we wanted to do the same clip again and we can just drag it on top of the one right here and just make sure like you gotta kind of push it up to the edge and then it'll, it'll make space for this track automatically. And then you see the green squares again on top and then you just drop it in the timeline and boom, there it is, video three. So now you have three video layers all in the same spot and you can do this as many times as you want and that's a super awesome feature anyone who ever used iMovie knows how relieving that is and if you didn't use iMovie or if you did and you don't know like why is that such a big deal 
um, it's going to come in handy for things like video effects like if you want to do letterboxing to make your video look more cinematic or you want to do like fades any of these things where you needed kind of like more video layers <laughs> You want to make video adjustments like you want to move the video and how it shows up on your screen the preview screen make sure it is highlighted bright blue by clicking on it so you know you're working with that clip and then if you look at the preview screen now you'll see that there's this square and these two arrows if you want to move this clip in the preview screen anywhere you can just click on it and like move it around with your mouse by dragging it while you're clicked on it also if you want to rotate this clip you can click on this blue square and you'll see this circle shows up when you're hovering over it click on that and then just drag it around this circle then that'll rotate the clip in the preview screen for you that's a nice little feature to have as well so you know if you recorded something and it's a little off um, you can rotate it the only thing I will say about rotating is if I rotate it like this you will notice this little area down here has those little checkers that means if you do that the video will just show this black bar right here if you export it like this so um, you have to scale it up. You have to scale your video up to fill that space. To scale up your video to fix that, you're gonna have to make sure that this clip is still selected and come over to your tabs over here, your libraries, and make sure you click on the controls tab. Now you're gonna see this little button down here that says transform, it's got a drop down menu. Click on that and it's gonna show you all these options, anchor point, position, scale, rotation, opacity. The position you can move directly on the screen like I just showed you, but you can also move it here and it will also show the values for that right here numerical values right in this little space but if you want to adjust your scale make sure you come down here and you go over the scale thing and to adjust the value of that you just hover your mouse over these little values right here right now it's at 118 percent scale but we need it to be bigger so hover your mouse over that number until you see these double arrows and then click with your mouse and it'll go away and then to make it bigger you drag your mouse to the right and it'll start scaling up. You'll see those numbers going up and up and up. So now it's at 163% of its original size. That's probably too much. So I'm gonna drag it and scale it down. And to do that, you just drag to the left and now it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So I can still see that space. So I'm gonna scale it up to about 120 and that should be good. <music> I'm just going to cover a couple of these tools that are here on the side for you guys. I'm only going to cover three of them. One of them being the one that's already selected because I think these are the ones that you guys will use all the time. Um, the first one is just a selection tool and the icon for it is just the mouse. What this tool does is pretty simple. You just, you know, click on a clip and you can move it in your timeline by clicking and dragging on it or bring it up to a different, you know, video layer. You can just move it around and any of that stuff. Pretty much moving clips in the timeline is what the selection tool does. It's pretty basic, but that's why it's the default tool. Now, if you wanted to make a cut or like split your video layer, you would need the slice tool, which is this one right here. Kind of looks like a little razor. So just click on that and you'll see once you click on it, it highlights blue. And now if you want to make a cut in your video clip, Clip, just hover over an area that you want to cut with your mouse and just left click on it and you'll see it makes two different clips now if you want to undo any cuts you make just press command z or control z on your keyboard and then i just got one more tool to show you guys and that is the rate stretch tool it looks like these two arrows right here going back and forth and basically what the rate stretch tool is is a way to speed up or slow down your clip so if you wanted to slow down your clip all you have to do is bring your mouse to the very edge of the clip and you'll see this little blue icon now that kind of looks like a bracket and just click on the edge of the clip and then drag it out to the right and this is going to make the clip play at a lot slower rate so now it's slowed down so if i played it by pressing spacebar you see it looks like really slow and choppy and stuff like that so obviously you know for this clip i don't want that i want to speed it up so if you want to speed it up just do the same thing come to the edge of the clip make sure you see that blue arrow click on it and drag to the left now for this, I'm just going to make it really fast by dragging it and making it really short. And then if I press spacebar again, it plays way faster now. I'm just going to press command Z to undo that. Now it's at the original speed that it was at. Also make sure when you're doing this, you have the rate tool selected. Otherwise, if you do that without the rate tool selected, like if you have the selection tool pick, you'll see that the bracket shows up, but it doesn't have an arrow. And this will basically just extend your video clip. But this is the end of the video clip, so there's nothing to extend nothing will happen but say for example you had this part of the clip at the end that you didn't like and you wanted to cut it out and you're using the selection tool you can come to the edge of the clip like this click on it and drag to the left like you would the rate stretch tool but this isn't going to change the speed of your clip it's just going to cut that part of the clip out 
One quick tip too is that I recommend learning all the keyboard shortcuts for these because you will be switching between the tools that I showed you, but probably all these tools eventually a lot. So it just makes editing a lot faster if you learn the keyboard shortcuts to go back and forth. So to learn those, you can just bring your mouse over and hover over any icon for a couple seconds and you'll see that it says, you know, it's the selection tool and the keyboard shortcut is V, it's in the parentheses. The slice tool is C and so on. So you can do this for any of the tools, any of these tools anywhere, like even on the play thing right here, you see the out point is O. If you want a full list of this for all the keyboard shortcuts you have and stuff, make sure you come up to the top left corner here where it says Hit Film Express, click on that, press preferences, and then just come down to this little thing that says shortcuts and click on that. And then you can just scroll up and down and you got all your shortcuts right here in a list. So the last thing I want to show you guys is how to export a video, just assuming that you made like a quick edit and you want to export it after that. So I'm just going to throw a couple more clips into the timeline here just by clicking on them from the media library and then dragging them right in the timeline, assuming that this would be what our edit, our edit would look like when it's all done. And then to export it, all you have to do is come over to this little icon right above the timeline that says export and click on that. And when you click on that, you're going to have two options. It's going to say in and out area or content. If you click in and out area, Area, it's only going to export part of the video kind of like the trimmer window does so to select in and out points in the timeline it's the same thing just make sure your timeline is highlighted and you can press i to set an in point where the video will start and then you can move your playhead and then press o to set where the out point will start and then you'll notice the video is lightly highlighted gray right here showing you that only this portion of the video is highlighted and will be exported alternatively if you hit export again and you select contents it's just going to select everything that's in the timeline so if i had a bunch of clips in there that i didn't want to export and i hit this they would all be picked and they would all be exported so and once you press pick an option and you you know once you press contents or even in and out you're gonna get this little dialog box right here that says that it's been added to the, ex the export queue so you have the option to either continue working or go to export but since we want to export you just want to click on go to export obviously and that's going to bring you to this render window it's going to show you all the projects that you're trying to render in this little queue right down here i already did this when i was practicing the tutorial so there's two videos so i'm just going to click on one by clicking on the name right here and it'll highlight blue and then i'll press backspace to delete it and just click the yes um, now there's only one video that we're trying to export in the queue. So there's a few things you can do here before you export. You can change the quality of the video you want to export it as just by coming under preset and clicking on this little arrow right here to give you your drop down menu. And then you have all these options for resolution and stuff to pick from. Since the project is in 1080p and most of my videos are exported for YouTube, I'm just going to pick the YouTube 1080p preset right here and it'll change all the rest of the settings for me. And it's pretty straightforward and that's pretty standard too. Most of the time, that's the preset you'll use for exporting your videos. However, you can create your own preset just by coming under this little box right here. It says presets and then coming down to press this little plus button that says create new preset and you know you pick your format you know mp4 quick time stuff like that if i clicked mp4 then it would show up with all of these options for creating your preset and the video quality but that's too much to get into right now it's just if you look at this it probably like is like you're probably like what is this i have no idea what this is especially if you're coming from imovie or not even using any software before so we're not even gonna get into that so i'm just gonna hit cancel so i just recommend using these presets to start until you kind of start learning about all the other stuff and then finally, the only thing you have to do after that is come under output right here in the queue and click on this little area that's underlined. And it'll bring up this other dialog box where you can change the name of the file you want. I'm just gonna name it tutorial. All right, I'm fine with that name. And then if you wanna change where it's being exported to, where it's being saved to, just come to where it says where, click on the drop down menu there. And I just wanna save it to my desktop. So I'll pick that folder and then I'll press save. And if you're finally ready for your video to export, come down to the very bottom right here. This little play button right here will say start exporting. Just click on that and it'll tell you your progress back up here. And all you have to do now is wait. So after that, you can just go back into your edit window by clicking up here where it says edit and you can go back and do some edits and stuff like that where you wait and that's it that's all pretty much all there is to it hopefully it does seem a little bit familiar to you and that it's not as scary making this transition because you can definitely get a lot more use out of this program and it's a capabilities than iMovie again but i'm not knocking iMovie either if you don't want to make the transition and you're happy with iMovie keep it by all means um you know because it's just as good for doing some basic editing sometimes you don't need all that extra stuff but anyway um hopefully you guys learned something if you do have any 
any questions about anything that I mentioned in here, I know I kind of go kind of fast in my tutorials. Just make sure to leave a question down in the comments down below. Did I say that right? Yeah, anyway, leave a comment down below. I'll try to answer it there or, you know, I'll try to make a video topic dedicated to that. So until then, see you guys next time. All right, peace out.